Hello there and welcome. Today we're gonna talk about the 2021 Omega Speedmaster Professional. I've always liked the Omega Speedmaster, but never pulled the trigger until recently. I bought a Speedmaster Reduced and was so in love that I bought a Professional a few weeks later. Now that I've owned it for over a month and a half, I love it. But there are also things I don't like and miss. Since this is another Speedmaster Professional video and 99.99% .99 of people know the history of this piece, I'll just cover it briefly. If you want to know more about its history, just search for it on YouTube or tell me if you want me to make a video about it. The Omega Speedmaster Professional was first introduced in 1957 and back then it was just a new model like every other watch. In 1960, NASA commissioned watches from various manufacturers for its astronauts and tested them to determine which piece best met the requirements. Five years later, the Speedmaster was considered the only watch fit for NASA's purpose. And that same year, it accompanied astronaut Ed White on a spacewalk. After that, the watch was a part of many different missions and even timed the burn of Apollo 13. So it is safe to say that this watch has one of the most remarkable histories. Because of this remarkable history, the Speedmaster is one of the most iconic watches on the market today and almost every collector owns at least one. The variety of Speedmasters is huge and therefore it can be difficult to choose one. So why did I buy the Speedmaster 2021 Sapphire Sandwich version? The current Speedmaster offers many things that previous generations lacked, such as the METAS certification. METAS means Master Chronometer Certification and it's basically an extended version of COSC. This requires various tests like magnetic exposure testing, water resistance testing, power reserve testing, accuracy testing and deviation rate testing. If a watch doesn't meet the manufacturer's specifications in these tests, it fails and doesn't get the certification. To pass the tests, Omega reworked the Calibre 861 and named it Calibre 3861, which is now more accurate, has anti-magnetic properties, hacking seconds and two more hours of power reserve, which apparently is a lot for YouTubers. A quick side note. You can use the code on the Meta certification card to view the test results of your Speedmaster online. Ok, back to the watch. What else changed besides the caliber and the certification? Quite a lot. It would be easier to list what has not changed in this generation. The case is slimmer and doesn't wear as you would expect at 42mm. The dot over 90 is back. The dial changed a bit and the Sapphire Sandwich version has an applied logo. The bracelet has been completely redesigned, tapering to 15mm and is one of the best and most comfortable bracelets on the market. Every time I wear my Seamaster 300M now, I'm shocked at how heavy and bulky the bracelet seems in comparison. Now I've told you everything that's new about the Speedmaster 2021. But did I miss the point of telling you exactly why I bought this watch? No, I didn't. Because nearly every aspect that changed is something that improved wearability, durability or the precision. And I love that. The Sapphire Sandwich wasn't much of a choice for me either. Seeing a manual wind chronograph movement appeals to me more than a closer to the original piece. Now you may think that this is the perfect Speedmaster, but to be honest, it isn't and I have a lot of criticisms. The new box is not nearly as nice as the old one. There are no straps or accessories included, you only get a small travel box and it feels like Omega wanted to save a few bucks by doing so. One of my major criticisms is that winding the watch is painful. Three people tried winding it and not one of them told me it's nice. Don't get me wrong, the caliber feels smooth, but the crown itself with the crown guards and the bezel is terrible. Your fingers start to hurt from the bezel and you either have to take a break or use your shirt to make it more comfortable. 
The great bracelet also has its downsides. And this is one of Omega's decisions I can't understand. When I first read reviews of the watch, everybody said it's nice that the watch finally got micro adjustments. My modern brain thought that micro adjustments are quick adjustments. But a few moments later I was shocked. Micro adjustment holes are new and Omega is releasing a watch without a quick adjustment clasp in 2021. Obviously they didn't learn their lesson when everyone bought the Planet Ocean clasp for their 300M. At this point I still thought it's okay if they don't get it yet. Well, a few months later the Speedmaster Chronoscope came out with almost the same bracelet and a quick adjustment clasp and I called my Omega boutique. I asked if the clasp would fit my Speedmaster and was told the Chronoscope bracelet only tapers to 16 mm, not 15, so it wouldn't fit. That was the moment I wondered if Omega's design team was drunk or trolling me. They launched one of their best selling watches, knowing that their buyers want a quick adjust function. And don't include it, but instead add it to a niche watch whose dimensions are slightly off, so you can't even fit it yourself. Away from the quick adjustment to my last criticism, or rather wish. According to the Metas testing and Omega, the water resistance of 50 meters means 50 meters and not just showers. But you can't be sure. If your watch gets damaged by water, that's your problem. And to me, that makes this sporty watch more of a dress watch. At a price of $7,150, $1,000 more than the old version, is the watch worth it with so many criticisms? That depends on your view of things. I love the chronograph function and use it daily. I can look at the movement for 10 minutes without getting bored. I think the watch wears great with its new dimensions and bracelet and the dial is beautiful. The Meta certification is also an important upgrade for me. Speedmasters are getting more and more expensive and this may not be the perfect Speedmaster professional, but the best one so far. Sure, I would like it to be perfect, but as long as I can smile while looking at it and know that it makes me happy, I'm fine. When the next Speedmaster comes out, I may upgrade, but until then, I'm going to enjoy my time with this one. Which Speedmaster would you buy and what do you think of my criticisms? If you liked the video, please leave a like. And if it wasn't your cup of tea, tell me why in the comments down below.